Who's going first? Just when you Why ask me something, just go nice and loud and clear and slow for my deaf ears. No problem. I'll go first then. Alright. Alright, we're going to be starting in three, two, one, and action. Alright, Doug. Hi. So, uh, I've got a first question, I've got a question for you, do you mind? Sure. Alright, so my first question for you is, do you believe that mental health is real, and why is that? I don't, I, it amuses me why people think it may or may not be real. I mean, nobody asks that question about your physical health. You know, that's very s straightforward, isn't it, physical health. Mental health's a lot more difficult to measure. It seems to me that when we talk about mental health, we're talking about mental unhealth, because I don't really see any role models for mental healthiness. Is that a thing? So, like, if you want to look at the physically healthy people you look at athletes right that's what it looks like to be in the tip top condition but who's the mental health equivalent of that who do you look at and go they're mentally healthy it's not pop stars it's not models it's not footballers all of the people that are held up as role models in our society i don't look, they don't look that mentally healthy to me certainly not the royal family is it these days so I don't know, I just think we've got a very strange thing about mental health, that we've got a, an ideal of what healthiness is, but I don't see anybody who matches that. So it feels to me like the whole of our society is unhealthy, by and large, in the way that we live. Is that too deep an answer to a short question? Yeah, so are you saying that it's more about people's bodies, that people are more focused on people's bodies than their health? Mentally? Well, it's a lot easier to track physical health, isn't it? So we, we know what physical health looks like because that's an athlete or somebody in tip-top condition and somebody who's like couch potato in front of the telly is the opposite or somebody's like got ailments, whatever. With mental health, it's much more complicated because people can be depressed or they can have like bipolar or all these things that it's much harder to diagnose, it's much harder to see and it's much harder to work with. So it's complicated. I think it's a complicated thing. But I'd like to see a couple of role models of what it looks like to be healthy, mentally. Um, how does the cost of living crisis make you feel? It makes me feel awful. It's, it's a t I'll tell you what, I've lived through a lot of things at the age of 58 and I honestly never thought we'd get to this stage, at this stage of my life. And. Um, where our country's come from, like in the early 90s, when we were still heralded as like leaders in the world for philosophy and politics and youth mm. culture and all sorts of things, we, it's just been a downhill slope, really, all the way till now. Yeah. I probably think we're all doomed and there's no hope and what's the point of life. Yeah, <laughs> that's fair. That's how it makes me feel. But I also think you've got to pick your battles a bit and you've got to do something that makes you feel all right or makes you feel better and if you've got a couple of mates and you can have a nice time in your social life and you do something that pays your bills that doesn't do your head in you've just got to try and keep your head above water really it feels like survival at the moment especially after brexit and covid and now we're into potential third world war again and cost of living it's never ending we just seem to be kept in a constant state of fear actually yeah so it's really hard to stay mentally healthy when you're in a perpetual state of fear, isn't it? What, what are you going to do with it? Yeah. You've got to do your best, I suppose. That's true. Do you think it'll get any better in the recent years or do you think we're far away from it being well, normal? I, I, think if, I think if Labour got in next time, I don't think it would carry on getting worse. Yeah. I'm not saying that I think Labour is the ultimate solution to all of our problems. But I would like to see the Tories out. Yeah, I think a lot of people would. So, there's a thing called Compass, which is a progressive left, centre-left alliance of people from different parties who are not Conservative or Nazis, mm. who are beginning to go, should we put all of our difference to one side and agree on some things and get, get them out, get the right out? and then we'll work out our differences later. I kind of feel like there's something about collaborative thinking or being a bit more flexible and fluid that's the way forward. I think the whole left wing, right wing thing's kind of had its day. In America and here, it's, just, it's too binary. Yeah. I think that's why the trans thing keeps coming up at the moment because 
people don't like things in between they want everything simple you're either left wing or right wing you're either male or female everything's simple but i don't think anything is that simple really yeah everyone just wants like a straight answer and it's yeah. usually always in the middle the answer's correct yeah or the answer is to be able to move around and be flexible and fluid and I, I'd, I'd like to think that that's part of the solution yeah it just takes a lot of accepting for other people to understand it's not just one thing or the other yeah, everybody needs to be right. I don't know why everybody's so bothered about it. Everybody gets so het up about it. If you don't like gay marriage, it's fine. You don't know anybody who's like... Why do you get yeah. people get bothered about things? You, it doesn't concern you. Just get on with your life. Yeah, I know. Stop I don't killing understand. each other and just get on with your own life. That would be a good thing. That makes sense. Just Thank you. too deep again. <laughs> yeah, we're going to go deep here, aren't we? So, yeah. Uh, so, do you think kids are exposed to social media at a young age? And why is that? Well, we can't control. We've we've made a monster. We can't control it. You know, when I was a kid, telly was kids' telly till six, and then it went a little bit more adult, and then everything was after the nine o'clock watershed that was adult, on the premise that the kids had gone to bed. Well, that's gone, hasn't it? Years ago now, everything's on catch up. Everything's all over the place. Nobody can control anything. Somebody can watch somebody having their head chopped off on a mobile phone in a kids' playground at school somebody shows somebody else. I mean that's terrible it's too easy to th see things that should not be in your head at all let alone when you're a kid uh, so social media gets a lot of flack but I don't think that's it's you know what you've got in your hand you can't imagine like 20 years ago we would have, would have just thought that was some science fiction film to have a computer in your hand that could be on the internet and you could make a film on it and put it on the internet I mean we're in always on culture so all of it's a problem. We, we've built a monster that we don't know how to control. We're all doomed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's the way you can see it. Uh, so would you say that, like, things like TikTok are ruining children in children's innocence? Well, innocence is, I don't know how you preserve it these days. I, I, I don't know if that's possible anymore. T TikTok's a particular thing which is like, to get everything shorter and shorter and shorter until you end up with these like 10, 20, 30 second things that then get passed around as if it's a thing. I think we've lost our literacy. You know, like reading and writing was the bedrock of everything before and now people don't read anymore. You lot don't write notes hardly. Well, you have done for this, but generally I look around at students, nobody's taking any notes, nobody's reading books everybody's information is just coming through this very mediated filtered kind of quick and easy thing I, I don't think it's I don't think it's a big problem in itself if you did other things the trouble is that it, people don't do the other things you know you can be on computer games three hours a day if you go out for a country walk for half an hour it balances it out but it you know well, the thing isn't the problem in itself is that if you only do that mm. then it becomes distorted Um, have you ever experienced sleep paralysis? I feel like I'm paralysed every time I go to sleep. <laughs> I mean, if I could, if I could uh, get out of bed with the enthusiasm that I get into it, life would be very different. Um, I go very, I go, I don't. Sleep paralysis is like when you wake up and you can't move, isn't it? Yeah. Is that what you mean? I've never had that thing, but. I go really, really deep into my dreams when I'm asleep, and oh then right. I, I kind of come to the surface and do this like I kind of want to work it out. Yeah. But then half of me wants to go back to sleep, half of me wants to work out what the hell was going on in my dream, which I guess is a slight form of paralysis that involves hitting the snooze button a few times. I mm. don't think that's quite quite what you mean but um, no my daughter's had it a few times and she gets really confused sometimes where she'll wake up and move something and then go back to sleep and then she'll freak herself out because she doesn't know whether she's done it in a dream or in real life yeah she gets really bothered by that it really upsets her but um, I, I don't think I've ever had that actual thing where I've woken up and couldn't move so far all right thank you so in 10 to 20 years, how do you think technology will help with uh, mental illness and why is that? In 10 to 20 years, how do I think technology will help with mental health? Mental health. Well, our 
artificial intelligence is a thing, right? And the, I watched a thing on it the other week that says it's it's going like that. So if you take nanotechnology, right, you make a robot and it can make an, an exact replica of itself but half the size, and then that makes one half the size, and that, and then you go down to a molecular sized robot, a nanobot that can go into your bloodstream and sort out stuff, and you know I think that's round the corner. So that's quite interesting. The mental health equivalent of that could be, you know, like if you want to learn to drive, you can go into a driving simulation, can't you? Like a computer driving simulation. It allows yeah. you to have crashes and make mistakes, which you can't when you're driving a car around. Maybe that's something that, you know, somebody who doesn't know how to do something, doesn't know how to talk to people very easily, can go into a simulation and practice it. So I think that would be all right, be useful, but it's it's going to end up getting filtered and censored and all kinds of it's complicated but i think we're only just starting the wonders of technology now that you know you you'll see it in your lifetime mm. interesting technology that is mind-blowing it'll be mind-blowing putting stuff in your head so i mean i'm i'm part cyborg now because i am deaf i've got these things in my ears that let me hear if somebody said do you want to put in your head inside i'd be like definitely you know, I'll go for the full cyborg thing, and then if they go, well, would you like that little bit of your brain short circuiting that goes round in circles that you drive yourself crazy with? Oh yeah, I'll have that, then please. Who knows? Anything that stops you going loopy, that'll be good. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, do you think the music you listen to can change or tweak your political views? Yeah, definitely. Um, there was a time in the 80s where they had a thing called Red Wedge that was like a Labour endorsed thing with the Style Council and Billy Bragg and people were involved with that. I didn't really like the music of that. But when I was 13 in 1977, the National Front were a big thing at the time. They were like proper yeah. thug Nazis. And we had Rock Against Racism and Anti Nazi League gigs where the punk bands would play with reggae bands. And it was all like black and white unite and fight against the Nazis and absolutely for me that was like yes I wanted to be part of that and then the whole sort of scar two two tone thing came yeah. out of that I mean yeah brilliant I mean I think yeah if you can put people on a stage it was diversity before it was called that yeah I mean, everybody's fixated on that now but back then it was just like okay so you've got a band that are made up of black and white people what do you do but then you look round at the audience and everybody's getting on and everybody's got a rock against racism badge on. I mean, yeah, why not? I think it definitely does make a difference. Fair enough. So you believe that music can change people's points of views on certain aspects? Yeah, when you look at... I sent you a thing about Pussy Riot the other day. Yeah. I mean, look at them. They're just some girls from Russia who are saying to Putin, we're not all right with you. And he's like a proper scary man who's scaring everybody. Yeah. And they're like some girls from Russia who can't even play. <laughs> who have been sent to prison for resisting and it could, does give you a bit of hope, doesn't it? Yeah, it takes a lot of bravery to do that. It really does. Yeah, definitely. Thank you. So do you think people are too focused on the positives of social media instead of the negatives? And could you uh, give it a, a in-depth answer, please? Well, are they? I don't know if they are. I don't know if people are too. I think everybody's focused on the negatives at the moment, especially with Elon Musk taking over Twitter and letting Andrew Tate and Donald Trump back on and all that stuff. I mean, I don't think that's healthy. I think Facebook's kind of died out for young people. I don't know if you use it much now. Like Young people seem to have moved away from it because their parents are on it and they wanted their own thing. All these other things are like passing fads, aren't they? Like Snapchat and TikTok have gone in another five years. I mean, I'm, do you remember MySpace? Do you remember MySpace? I remember yeah. I mean, that had, that had everything for years. That looked like it was going to be here forever and then just died completely and went away. I think everything will be like that. Things come and go. But the technology that allows you to communicate with a lot of other people and post your own stuff, I mean, that's good stuff, I think. It just needs, we haven't really worked out what to do with it. Thank you. I think that's the problem with it. We haven't really worked out what to do with it yet. Yeah. Um, do you think the UK's economic crisis is at its peak? And do you think the government's handling it well, or are they handling it at all? No, it's an absolute shit show, and it definitely isn't. I wish it was at its peak. I, I, I think we've got worse to come. So, I don't know what, 
what I can say about that that feels positive. If Labour got in in two years, even in five years in office, they'd be just repairing the damage that's been done. Yeah. So it's going to take them 10 years in office if they got that. So we even start to build the public sector back again. So the public sector, which is like this, you know, health, education, all sorts, it's, it's been run down. Um, but back to the fluidity thing, I think there's a hybrid model that is like part private sector, part public sector. I don't think everything has to be either or. Yeah. I think that's the way forward is like you can have everything, like a spectrum. So that's my hope for the future. Other than that, we're doomed. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think we're too far gone to fix it or is it just going to take time? Do you know, it's like the thing is with being older, you see things come round and round and round and everybody thinks this is a thing, this is a thing and then it goes and then you think well, that's gone. And then 10, 20 years later, it all comes back round again. Yeah. I think we just go round and round in circles. But um, I'd like to think kindness would come into fashion, you know? Yeah. Just basically stop killing each other, make sure the people with least are okay, and get on with our lives. Stop chopping all the trees down. People like power, though, and it's... Why? Why do, why do they like power, Molly? You know? I don't know. Look at Rishi Sunak. He's like a multi-millionaire. Mm. What is the point of having that job? You could just go and have a nice life, mate. He has no idea what he's doing. No idea. But I don't know why he's doing it either. No. Like, just go and have a nice life. It's like he's you got a bucket you know. list at this point. Something about money and power that is just never enough. It's just never enough. They always want more, more, more. I don't know what the solution to that is. Neither do I. Start a revolution. Yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. But that's your job, not mine. <laughs> What else have you got? Anything else? I've got one more question left. Um, so how do you think the rise of price might affect people or businesses? And do you feel like this will personally affect you? So run that past me again. So how do you think the rise of prices might affect people or businesses as well as affecting you? Well, you, start, you just have to start being selective about what you do. The algorithm of life is you need more money coming in that you've got going out. If your incomings are more than your outgoings, you're okay. If they're not, you, you're sinking. So you have to start being selective and go, do I need that thing? or Do, do you know the difference between what you want and what you need? Everybody wants stuff. What you need is food, clothes and shelter, really. But everybody, oh, I want this, I need that. And blah, blah, blah. So I think yeah, maybe it's a good thing that we're having to pull things in a little bit and not be so wasteful like throwing clothes away, throwing everything away, you know, like maybe it'll force us into being a little bit more economical and thoughtful with what we consume, like having to tighten our belts and it won't be such a bad thing in the end. That's a reasonably optimistic note, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> well, following on from that, um, do you feel the amount of homeless people on the streets right now has increased and uh, do you feel like you've become desensitised towards them? No, I haven't become desensitised. It upsets me a lot. It upset me in Brighton and it upsets me here that we've got people on the streets at all. And, you know, I'm not saying Jeremy Corbyn was the answer to everything, but his number one thing was, if I get into power that day, I'll take everybody off the streets. There's yeah. no need for it. And they've got the resources to do so. But they did it in COVID. Yeah. They did it. They took everybody off the streets for a few months and then put them back on again. I mean, how cruel is that? It's I don't understand people who could mentally be okay with doing that. I worked in a homeless hostel in Rochdale for a little bit in one of my weird jobs since I left Brighton. And you, you meet, meet people that you, ju you think you're so different to them and then you hear the story and you just think it only takes a couple of turns of bad luck to yeah. end up in that position. And all it takes is that you haven't got somebody who goes, oh, you can jump on my sofa or whatever until you're sorted. Those people have just haven't got anybody who've got their back. And that's, yeah. that's terribly sad. But I'm not saying I know what the solution is either. It's complicated. But we shouldn't have anybody on the streets in this country. We really shouldn't. No. It's an absolute crime of our times. Oh, I thought I was going to end on a positive note. Aww. Give me something positive to end on. Um. <laughs> How have you been? Hey? How have you been? How have I been? Yes. Oh, that's not going to be positive. <laughs> it's not. It's, it's a struggle. It's not an easy time to live in at the moment. I don't envy your position being in people today a complicated thing to make the best of. I think you've just got to make the best of a bad job, really. That's as good as it gets at the moment. Um, 
and trust that the time will come when it'll get better again. Yeah. One positive is, do you think the punk era will come back? I think something will come back, and I think it might be something crawling out of a cave in Afghanistan after the bombs have left or whatever. Yeah. I don't think it'll come out of here. We're too saturated, it's too much, everything's too hyped up. But I think there's parts of the world where things will happen and maybe it'll be a mixture of film technology and smartphones and bits of bombs that have been left behind. Who knows? There's a chance I to... I imagine something interesting will come out of Ukraine in five years. Yeah, we'd hope so. Gives people a place to rebuild. Yeah, exactly. All right, thank you. All righty, toodaloo. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that was deep. <laughs>